Good day, everyone. It is indeed an honor and privilege to present to you our research, Assessment of Health-Seeking Behavior and its Determinants Among the Deaf and Teaching Personnel in a Public Schools District. With me are my co-authors, Ms. Ronalyn P. Salazar, our school nurse, Ms. May Anjoy D. Romanes, the Senior Education Program Specialist of Planning and Research, Dr. Maria Joby P. Legaspi, the Public Schools District Supervisor of Tansa, and yours truly, Dr. Diana P. Topacio, the Chief of Schools Governance Operation Division in Schools Division Office of DepEd Cavite Province. Over the years, education has been continually used as a medium in looking after the health of the people. Teachers kept talking about the importance of health of the students. There is a widespread assumption that teachers would be the first one to look after the health since they promote welfare and wellness among the youth. Students learn best through the examples observed from their teachers. However, a recent study found that the health and welfare of the teachers have shown more neglect as compared to employees from other fields. And what is this HSB? Health-seeking behavior encompasses any activities undertaken by individual to provide a remedy to their perceived illness instead of going to proper health facilities and professionals. Some examples of this are over-the-counter, sleeping, stress shopping, drinking alcohol, faith healers, or ranting. The major precursors of this study are the growing number of cases of health-seeking behavior in deaf ed Cavite. This study answered the following questions. Number one, what is the profile of the teaching personnel in terms of age, civil status, range of net pay, and distance from the nearest health facility, family type, and the number of their dependents? Number two, what are the health-seeking behaviors of the teaching personnel? Number three, what is the level of health-seeking behaviors of the teaching personnel from District X? Number four, can the social demographic data of the respondents predict the level of health-seeking behavior of the teaching personnel? The study utilized a quantitative research design. It involved 356 elementary and secondary teachers. It focused on describing the profile of the teaching personnel from District X in terms of age, civil status, and distance from the nearest health facility, family type, and number of dependents, identifying the health-seeking behaviors of the teaching personnel from District X determining the level of health-seeking behavior of the teaching personnel, identifying the social demographic data of the respondents, predict the level of health-seeking behavior of the teaching personnel. A total of 1,450 elementary and secondary teachers in District X were invited to answer the online survey. For the data collection procedure, the online link for the validated instrument was sent to the identified respondents. The link was made accessible for two weeks. After this, data were collected through an online spreadsheet. Consent forms were included in the online instrument. Frequency count was used in identifying the health-seeking behaviors of the teaching personnel from District X. To determine the level of the health-seeking behaviors of the teaching personnel from District X, average, standard deviation, and mean percentile score was computed. Ordinal regression analysis was used to determine if age, civil status, range of net pay, distance from the nearest health facility, family type, and the number of dependents can predict the level of health-seeking behavior among the respondents. The findings revealed the social demographic profile of the respondents. In terms of age, most of the respondents range from 31 to 40 years old. It was followed by the respondents aged 21 to 30 years old. 
and 41 to 50 years old. In terms of civil status, 214 respondents were married. 125 were single. This was followed by 13 respondents who were separated and four were widowed. As for the distance from home to preferred health facilities, 180 answered that these facilities were within their municipality. 133 responded that their preferred health facilities were within their barangay. Other respondents confirmed that their preferred health facilities were within Cavite. A small number of respondents preferred to go outside Cavite to check their health. Most respondents belonged to nuclear families. Others had extended families. 23 personnel had single parent families. Other personnel had childless families. Very few of the respondents were living alone, living with step family or grandparent family. In terms of the number of dependents, 265 personnel have zero to two dependents. This was followed by 85 respondents who have three to five dependents. Six had six to eight dependents. Aside from the demographic data, the health-seeking behavior of the re respondents was also analyzed. Among the 32 identified health-seeking behaviors, the top five were identified. The highest among them was rest, with 239 responses. This was closely followed by sleep, with 236 responses. As for 198 respondents, they were praying for healing. The use of medicated oil or BAM was preferred by 192 respondents. 186 answered that they used herbal medicine. Using the normal distribution curve, the level of health-seeking behavior was determined. The scales used were no health-seeking behavior, mild, moderate, moderately severe and severe. Findings revealed that only two had no health-seeking behavior at all. 174 had mild health-seeking behavior. With moderate health-seeking behavior were 128 personnel. Following this were 47 personnel with moderately severe health-seeking behavior. Five personnel were found to have severe health-seeking behavior. The average health-seeking behavior of teaching personnel in District X was 9.67, categorized as moderate health-seeking behavior. Regression analyses revealed that the social demographic profile could not predict the level of health-seeking behavior among the respondents. Based on the data generated through this study, health-seeking behavior broadly exists among the teaching personnel in a public schools district. Data also revealed that the social demographic characteristics of this personnel could not predict health-seeking behaviors. These findings suggest that future district wellness programs, projects, and activities must include most, if not all, teaching personnel to address their ailments adequately. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. I hope that you learned something from this.